It's time for another shout out mail call episode with boxes this time. Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure and it's time to open these boxes for this shout out and mail call episode. I've already opened the top box, which is from Liberty Seeker, because you guys have seen some of the contents from this package. He's the one who sent me the fruit fly stuffed animal that we've been seeing on the strings. But I'm going to get to that box last. That's why it's on top. That's why it's opened. We've got seven other boxes here that I'm going to get to. Let's kick it off with this box right here from SMK. SMK, brother, this is an awesome package. Look at this. A stadium club hat from my favorite team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. SMK was a season ticket holder. This is from 2004, the year after the Bucks won the Super Bowl. And check this out. A Mike Allstott 2015 number 40 commemorative coin. Unbelievable. I think it's funny. Every football season, Mike was my wife's boyfriend. Something for your collection. I love it, brother. Thank you so much. This is an awesome gift. You know I'll be wearing this during Sundays. My second package comes from Coin Kid. Now Coin Kid has sent me a few things. First he sent me a few buffalo nickels. He'd like me to nickadate. This one has already been nickadated and scratched across where the date would be. I'm not sure I'll be able to pull a date off this one because even if I re-nickadate it, it might be tough to see. The good news is on the other Buffalo nickel, you can clearly see it. If you look at it at right angles, it is a 1920 Buffalo nickel. And I'll try to get you guys a good look at it. You'll be able to see the date with the naked eye. You can see a 2-0 at the end. So I won't need to nick and date this one, but I'll toss it in a flip for you, coin kid. 1920 Buffalo nickel. And I don't think there's a mint mark on this one. No mint mark. 1920p on that one. I will try to get this one. It's already trashed. So it's probably a teens based on the wear on the front. But on the wear on the back, it might even be a 20s. So I'll get a, try to get a date on this one if I can. If I can't, I'll put it down as unknown. For me doing that for him, he sent me a Canadian scent. Thank you very much. And a beautiful 1958D wheat scent. This thing is a stunner almost in, maybe in, red condition. And then a replica 1911 gold Indian head copy. Can't get mad at that. It even says copy on it right there that you can see. It looks awesome though. I'll definitely add it to my collection. And then finally, he gave me a roll of nickels. He said I can use it as a giveaway if I'd like. Man, it is pretty cool. Casino and Hotel. Looks like it's a roll straight from the 80s, maybe even earlier. I don't know if I'll be able to catch an ender on this one. Don't want to damage the roll, so I don't know. But definitely, definitely, maybe some oldies in there. I'll probably use it as a giveaway like he asked if I could. And I think it'd be a nice addition to one of my end of streams. That being said, let me see if I can nicodate this bad boy and pull a date. Fingers crossed. All right, so we finished Nick and dating. We got good news and bad news. The bad news is, as expected, I cannot pull a date. All the raised elements have scratches through them. I really can't figure out what this one is. It's a Philadelphia Mint, so it's likely not valuable anyway. But I wanted to let you know that. The good news is, upon further inspection of this 1920 that I thought was a Philadelphia, I flipped it over and I thought I caught the glimpse of the top of a possible mint mark. So I went ahead and nicodated the reverse on this. And take a look at this. There's a Denver mint mark on it. I do not need to nicodate the front. I can guarantee you that is a 1920. I know I thought I was certain on the back, but I wanted to be extra certain. And that's when I saw that there was maybe a mint mark. And it was. So this one is a 1920D. So we know what that one is now. That's a little bit better date than a 1920p. In G4 condition, it's about an $8 nickel. But after nickel dating, it's about a buck. Either way, we know what that one is. We don't know what that one is. Braden, thank you for the package. I'll get them flipped up, sent back to you, and we'll use that roll in a future giveaway.
I also forgot Coin Kid or Brayden wanted to know which King George the Fifth nickels, I believe, that I need for my album. Now, if you're talking about King George the Fifth pennies, all I need is 1924 and 1925. But for the nickels, I can show you here a 23, a 25, both of the 26s, a 1930, a 1933, and then the other ones on this side is the 1947, and of course the high relief, 51. But that's it. Those are the King George V nickels that I need, brother. And congratulations on being a first class in the Boy Scouts of America. Now I'll get on to the next package. Thank you, Coin Kid. I almost missed that. My next package comes from my friend, Karsten Hintz. He actually sent this package from his vacation spot in New York because he's in Germany and customs can be a bear. He basically says he just wanted to say thank you. He wanted to say thank you for getting his interest in coin roll hunting and constitutional silver. He's a fan of the channel. He sent me two coins from the German Empire, both before World War I. They're both 90% silver. First, he sent me this beautiful five mark coin. It has the coat of arms on it. It's actually from his hometown in Hamburg. It's a nice chunk of silver. You're right, it is. Take a look at that. Man, that's a beauty. That is a beauty, my friend. Can't get mad at that. He says the rim writing, there's rim writing on it. Oh, there is rim writing on it. Let's see if I can get this so you guys can see it. You can just make out some rim writing. The rim writing says, Gott mit uns, which means God with us. The second coin is a one mark piece, same size as our quarters. Look at that, 1876. What a beautiful piece of silver. Can't wait to put that in a flip, add it to my collection as well, brother. Very cool. Pre-World War One, 90% silver pieces from Germany. He also sent me two three nines fine silver rounds from the German Berlin Mint. It shows the Quadriga, which is on top of the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. Here they are right here. We've got 2017. Awesome. Look at that. And I believe this is also 2017. Yes. So what Carson wants me to do is add one to my collection and add one for a giveaway. Who doesn't want some beautiful... German silver from the Berlin Mint, three nines fine, 2017 with the Quadriga on top. Thought we'd take a few extra seconds looking at this beautiful piece of three nines fine German silver. That's the obverse, I believe, could be the reverse. And look at this. Beautiful, beautiful, brother. I'll get it back in its capsule, and like I said, one of these is also for an end of stream giveaway. He also sent me a bag of foreign coins, which for sake of time, I won't go through right now, but you can bet your bottom dollar when we're done with this video, I'll be searching these. Karsten, thank you very much, my friend. Thanks for giving your regards to Charlani and Kaylee, and thank you for the goodies for the giveaway. My next package comes from my friend, Terry Heaton. I'm gonna read his note because I think it's great. Rob, I'll keep this short because it's better TV. The items are all for you. Compliments of a 73-year-old retired guy who watches your videos and is fully entertained every time. Thank you very much, Terry. This is my paid and full debt to you for all your hard work. Thank you and use these gifts in any way that benefits you and your business. The painted quarter sets have never been opened. I bought them on a lark thinking they might have value someday. LOL, I don't think so anymore, but you would know better than me. You know, they really don't have much value. I went ahead and opened the very first one. He's got all the years here. This is from 1999. So you can see the reverse of these have been painted. Sometimes during your corner hunts, you may find these, but not in this condition, of course. And so it's got the regular quarter obverse and the painted quarter reverse. These are the five different states issued in 1999. Every one of these envelopes is packaged as such. Just wanted to show you guys what they look like. Own a piece of America, the Americana series. I think they're really cool. I don't think they have much value, but people do collect things like this. And because they're in pristine shape, they are definitely good to add to the collection. So thank you very much, my friend. I will definitely add those to my collection. 
The foreign coins have various values. I like the fat one pound coin from Britain. So I went ahead and grabbed that coin out. Where is it at? Right here. The fat one pound coin from Britain. Look at this thing. I love it as well. It's not as heavy as you would think, but it is a fat coin. The peso from the Philippines used to be my lucky scratch off coin for lottery games. Since I never won a thing, I have to give up any thoughts that it is indeed a lucky coin. Now it's yours. That's right here. You can even see it's been worn down from him from using it for so many years. I'll consider it a lucky coin for me. Maybe it's always luckier on the second person's ownage of it. So, looks like I've got a new scratcher coin. If it doesn't do me any luck in the next six months, I might be passing it on to someone else because third time might be a charm. The U.S. coins contain a variety that I've picked up over the years. There's a V-nickel and a 55 penny, but the stars here are the transit tokens. The 1902 Fort Monroe is the most valuable, but the Honolulu Transit Authority token is pristine. And take a look at these. First of all, here's the V-nickel, 1897. Really cool. This is the Honolulu Transit token, and yeah, it is in fantastic shape. 1924 as well. Here's the 1902 Fort Monroe. That is awesome. Good for five in trade. Beautiful, brother. He also set a nice Walking Liberty from 1936. Some pennies like he was talking about, including a 55. And other various assorted foreign coins that I'll put in my collection. Again, thank you so much for entertaining me. I've had that treasure hunter spirit since I was a little boy in the early 50s when I collected cigar bands and the drama of coin roll hunting is genuine. It is, my friend. I'm looking forward to uploading this mail call because I've got some penny boxes screwed in my name as well as a bag of foreign screwed in my name. So thank you again for the kind words, the package, and the cool collectibles. My next package comes from the Silver Jedi. Silver Jedi says that she wanted to pass on a little something from my Star Wars collection. 15 Star Wars stamps from 2017. And look at these bad boys. Man. Loving them. For those that don't know, I'm a Star Wars fan. Trekkie fan. Whatever. I enjoy it. Thank you very much to Silver Jedi. Plus a few other stuff for you two. Also found some coins in a free box at a yard sale. Which is most of these right here. Just a bunch of... Flipped up, older Wheaties, nothing really valuable, but still pretty cool. I thought it was neat that there was even a plated 1961D in there. Heavily plated, definitely crazy. Also, the Silver Jedi sent me the 1977S proof that I need for my Eisenhower album. So that is awesome. I just got a 73 and a 74S from Big Mill. Now I got the 77S. All I need now, which I forgot about in my Ike video, is a 76 clad S-proof type 1 and type 2. We'll get there. Two more to go. Thank you, the Silver Jedi. She sent me a bunch of stamps, which I won't go through right now. But for those stamp collectors, let me know if you want to see them at a later time. We also got the Chinook Winds Lincoln City, Oregon $1 casino token. I like that a lot. She said she found this. Coin roll hunting, and it was an RFT coin that someone marked up. I have yet to see an RFT quarter, but now I have. She also found a dollar bill. Doesn't want anyone to get me offended. Just show me what she found. A $3 disgruntled States of America <laughs> with Bill Clinton on there. Unbelievable. I have seen these before. In $3 bill we trust. Not the for sale sign in front of the White House. Pretty crazy. That's a cool find. She has a package for the EOS, which I'll keep as a surprise from Silver Jedi. And then finally, even a package for Shalani, which I will be sure she gets when she gets back. Silver Jedi, thank you for the package. Especially thank you for the 77S. And I'll get those back to you in the next few days or so. Beautiful. And like a glove my very next package was an epic one and it comes from ryan who's with jackson hole coin now he also has an ebay store 
And if I can find the link, I'll put it down below, but I'll definitely have his channel link down below as well. Pretty simple note. Hi, Rob. Please use these as you see fit. Appreciate your videos and the time that gets put into each one. Thanks, Ryan. Short and sweet, but the package is anything but short and sweet. It is epic and awesome. I'm going to go through them as fast as I can, but do them all the justice they deserve because there's lots of goodies. First and foremost, thank you, Ryan, for the 73S and 77S. Now, I have had some added to the book. Everyone decided to go ahead and send me some, which I appreciate, but I'm going to see if these upgrade the ones I have, and if they do, they'll have a home in the book. Otherwise, I'll have a home in the collection. He also sent a couple of copper rounds for Charlani. I'll let her open it. I can see that they are copper rounds, and that's her favorite type of rounds, copper rounds. We've got a Liberty coin right here, half dollar proof. This is a beautiful commemorative. You can't get mad at that. That is awesome. Next up, we've got another package here that has dollars of the millennium. First and last, the Susan B. Anthony from 1999 colorized and the Sacagawea from 2000 colorized. Absolutely beautiful Dollars of the Millennium collection. Next up, an uncirculated bank set. You guys have probably seen these types before. Different kind of packaging. 1990, got all the coins from the Denver Mint. Absolutely stunning. I love the packaging on these uncirculated bank sets. He also gave me for my streams a roll of 40 percenters. Can't get mad at a whole roll of 40 percenters. I could always use those. You guys know I run out of them quite often. Next up, another kind of a jewelry box, but this one has a JFK half dollar tribute to the Columbia Space Shuttle. Look at that. Wow. Next up, Indian Head and Lincoln Head Sense, the complete design set. What a cool book this is. Gives you a little bit of history about the Indian Heads, about the Lincoln Heads. It even has one of the Indian Head Scents in it, a wheat back, a memorial, a steel scent, and then the Bicentennial Scents from 2009 that has the tribute to Lincoln and even the Shield Scent. What a very cool package here. That is nice. We even have the Sherrett Mint. Gives a little bit of history about nickels and how Canada is one of the main sources for our nickel sulfides. But also you can find nickel in Australia and a few other places like South Africa and the Soviet Union. What I love a lot about it is we've got a blank nickel planchet. A 1966, the Sherrett Mint, and then a version of the Canadian Nickel from 1971. Very cool. Continuing on with nickels, we've got a Nickel United States Collector set. So I've got it open. We're going to go ahead and turn the page here. Take a look at this. We've got a V-Nickel or a Liberty Head Nickel, an Indian Head Nickel or Buffalo Nickel, and then, of course, a Jefferson Nickel. And it gives you a little bit of history behind them, the minting process, the whole nine yards. Love it. Look at those nickel dies. Again, I know I'm going a little quick through this, but there's so much to cover, I want to cover them all. Next up, a beautiful collector set, nine decades of Lincoln pennies. We've got the teens, the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Very cool set here. You can't get mad at that. Wow. I have never seen one like this. We've got a Heroes of the War in the Pacific. Take a look at this bad boy. A $5 token right here. Look at the detail. Soldiers raising the flag. Come on. Gives a little bit of history of the war in the Pacific. Talks about the heroes of it and the whole story of 1995 and why they made this $5 commemorative coin. I think I said token in the beginning. I guess there, it is a coin because it does have face value. Very awesome. Staying with that theme of World War II obsolete coin collection. Look at this. The steel scent from 43, the shell case scents 44, 45, and 46, as well as the four silver nickel years. The coins that helped win World War II. 
beautiful. Next up, we have an authentic Native American arrowhead and coin collection. Jackson Old Coin has given one of these to me before and I gave it away on one of my streams. We loved it. A buffalo head nickel, an Indian head nickel, and an authentic arrowhead. What a beautiful little collector set. The next package is a put together package that has the symbols of American freedom. Check it out. The Jefferson Monticello nickel, the Lincoln Memorial penny, the Bicentennial Liberty Bell dollar, the Independence Hall half dollar, and a silver George Washington half dollar as well. American Monuments Collection. Absolutely a great set to add to anyone's collection. And then finally, a 1941 present day Lincoln cents. It has all of the Lincoln cents from 1941. And I believe the final page in the very back ends with 1975. I gave away a book similar to this that Jackson Old Coins has sent me. So I'll be glad to give away another one during one of my streams. Ryan with Jackson Hole Coin, wow. The first package you sent was epic, and this one's even more epicer, if you will. Can't believe the generosity that you've given to me and the coin community. Really appreciate the kind words. Appreciate the fact that you acknowledge the work I put in my videos. This is awesome. I will definitely use a lot of these for future stream giveaways, and I likely will keep just a few for myself since I may not ever see one of these again. As a reminder, Everyone, please give it up and thank Jackson Old Coin or Ryan. And if you can, check out his eBay store. Unbelievable. Holy smokes, my next package comes from Brian Jones. Wow. Brian Jones says, Rob, three sets for giveaway and a set for you. Every set is going to have a Mint State 64 silver quarter, a 56D beautiful wheat scent, a 37 buffalo nickel, and a 44 Mercury Dime. Four sets. I get to keep one. I get to give away three from Brian Jones. On top of that, he says the book was an extra. Give it away if you can. You bet your bottom dollar I can. A 1920 United States Coins Red Book. Man, that's nice. I'll be sure to give that one away as well. Some lucky person will have their own Red Book, thanks to Brian Jones, along with three other giveaway items. He wanted to let me know to thank Shalani for keeping me straight and don't tell JD I gave you a sticky note. <laughs> Brian Jones, thank you so much for your generosity as well. I'll get these set up for giveaways. I'll get that set up for giveaways. I'll add that to my collection. And I guess I'll thank Shalani as well. Today's final package comes from Liberty Seeker. Now I've opened this package ahead of time. It was open about a week ago. And the reason I had done that is because Liberty Secret asked if I had gotten the silver fruit fly. You guys have seen him on the stream. He also has this little silver gram on his hand glued to it. This is now the stream mascot, the silver fruit fly. He also sent me a new headdress or headgear. I'll be wearing this probably on Halloween stream. It is a, I guess I could kind of show it to you one handed, but it has a cap like this. So it's kind of like a cap with a tail and you tie it around, almost like a bandana. You guys will see it featured in one of my streams, most likely the Halloween stream. He also wanted me to go ahead and let you guys know to donate this cherry picker's guide. It's volume two, it's got the half dimes to modern dollars plus golden commemoratives. Obviously everyone knows the cherry picker's guide for pennies, that's the most famous one. But this is volume two, where it has the pictures of what you'd be cherry picking and some information about them. So I'll be donating this to the end of stream as well. Thank you, Liberty Seeker. On top of that, his wife had made a couple of purses and he said that I can give one to Charlani and one to Kaylee, they can take their pick. These are a few they made a few years ago, but his wife's gonna be opening a shop by the end of October. So be happy to know the link to that eventually, Liberty Seeker to check out her shop with some handmade goodies. Let me clear up some space and then I'll show you this last piece, which is a puzzle with some goodies in it. So this final item from Liberty Seeker is open it by solving the puzzle, treasure inside for you and giveaways. Now I'm gonna try to do it one handed. I've already done it. Shalani actually did it pretty fast too, I was surprised. But here's how it works. It's a box that you see the hinges on the top and you think, how do I get inside of it? You can hear the goodies, but you can't get to them. We well, gotta look around here first, and the first thing I noticed was that this thing slides left and right. This doesn't come off, and it doesn't slide all the way to the right, but 
it doesn't slide all the way to the left either. However, it exposed this piece. So once I saw that piece, I opened that up and that came out. And inside there was a drawer here that if you pull in the drawer, you've got a drawer full of goodies. Now I'm gonna take these out for now. We'll show them later. And so I started to put it back together and I thought, wait a minute, there's still stuff in here. So I started looking around and I noticed that this piece was a little bit loose, but I thought it can't get down unless it gets this out of the way. So I tried to push it left, it didn't go. So then I started pushing it right and sure enough, it did go. Well, once it went, I noticed there was a spot here. So I pulled that down and I could see the lock. Then I just pushed the lock to the side and the top opened and boom, a treasure chest full of goodies. Let me organize this really quick and we'll cover what's in here and what's over here. So that treasure chest was packed full of goodies and for sake of time, I'm going to have to kind of go fast through them. But let me show you what we got here. We got six Ben Franklins from 1960 to 62. There's a couple of 60s, a couple of 62s, I think a couple of 61s as well. And they're in really great shape. Awesome additions to anyone's collection. I'll be sleeving them up and using them during my live stream. Very awesome. We've got seven wheat scents packaged in a little tiny seal pack or vacuum pack, I believe. But there's all kinds of years in here. There's even a 1930, I think there was a nice 1918 and a 1913 Philadelphia 29S. Man, those are really cool. A full roll of uncirculated 69D, I believe. Yeah, 69D. Man, that's awesome. Well, I'll be checking that out to make sure it's a full roll, but both ends are 69Ds. We've got one of the nicest 1916 toned Mercury Dimes I have ever seen. No, it's not a Denver Mint, but it doesn't matter. This thing is a stunner. It will definitely upgrade in my album. Man, that's beautiful. And it even says Rob on it, which means it's mine. We've got some really beautiful 58Ds, Lincoln Sense, Wheatback Sense, I should say. Awesome. Some random Canadian pennies. We've also got two full bags of some old Roman coins. Unbelievable. I wish I had time to go through all these right now, but by the time I go through them, try to decipher what years and which emperors are on them, it could take a long time, but I'm looking forward to doing it off camera. That is awesome. We've got a bag of foreign goodies. We've got a V-nickel from 1911 and a corroded penny that I think is either a 26, 36, or 16. I got to look at it more closely. The last digit is a 6. First two will be a 19 for sure. Another bunch of flipped up beautiful Lincoln wheat scents. Looks like we possibly have a nice Roman coin here. Don't know if it's a replica or it's real. It's got great detail on it, that's for sure. We've got some pirate treasure, a flattened silver dime. We've got barber dimes, 1901p, 1913p, 1916p, and 1916s. As well as an assortment here of some beautiful steel wheat scents, all in great shape, and even a couple of 64 proofs. What? A package. Liberty Seeker. I wish I could spend more time on this, brother, but it is awesome. You said to use the contents for either myself or giveaways. I will definitely create some cool giveaway package with that. I appreciate you sending me a fun puzzle, lots of goodies to look through, stuff for the community, and of course, how can I get mad at having a stream mascot now, some new headgear, and a couple of purses for Sholani and Kaylee. Wow. Those eight boxes were jam-packed full of goodies. You guys are very generous, very giving, and once again, I appreciate all of your kind packages and kind words. Hopefully you enjoyed this shout-out mail call episode for just boxes. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. 
Be sure to check out everyone's channel listed down below. And as always, everyone, happy hunting. And thanks for watching.